Well, let's turn attention now to the nation's capital, where the chairman, CEO, Nigerians and Diaspora Commission, Nabike Dabirerewa, has celebrated three more Nigerians who won their respective re-election into various districts in the United States of America. They are Reps Gabe Okoye, representing um, Georgia District 102, Phil Olaleye, representing 59th District of the Georgia, uh, and Solomon Adesoya, a Democrat, representing 43rd District in Georgia, a House of Representatives. Mrs. Dabi Rerewa, in the congratulatory message issued by the Director of Media and Public Relations of the Commission, Abdul Rahman Balogu, described the trio as worthy ambassadors of Nigeria. The NITCOM chairman said the re-election victory was not accidental, but proven track records of their performances in office to their respective constituents earned them the victory. To other stories, the Plateau State Governor, Caleb Mutfang, has dismissed rumors of an alleged improvised explosive device planted at the old Joss University Teaching Hospital site, close to the Terminus main market in the state capital. The governor clarified that the alarm was a false one, triggered by a group of individuals who misinterpreted a heap of polythene bags as a potential threat. The report led to a wave of fear and panic among citizens in the area. Mr. Mutfang explained that security agencies, including the anti-bomb squad from the Plateau State Police Command, responded swiftly, conducting a thorough cordon and search operation at the scene. After an exhaustive inspection, no evidence of any explosive device was found. Residents in the state are called to remain vigilant and to act as responsible ambassadors of the state, upholding its reputation and rich heritage. The Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps, NSCDC, Oshun State Command, has paraded five suspects allegedly involved in illegal mining activities, along with an individual arrested for theft. Rafiu Hamid reports. There is no doubt that numerous illegal mining activities are taking place in Oshun State, especially in Ijesha land. The negative impact of these illegal mining activities is not only felt by the government in terms of revenue losses, but also by the host communities whose farmlands have been destroyed. The Nigeria Security and Civil Defense Corps made this arrest of suspected illegal miners in Indonesia. Our investigation revealed that the suspects who are from Kano State carry out their illegal mining activities without mining license. And this act contravenes Nigeria Minerals and Mining Act of 2007 which states that no person shall engage in any mining activities without a valid mining lease or permit. The five suspects are from Kano and began operation in Oshun State about two months ago. So, I am a pharmacist. I am a pharmacist. I am a pharmacist. I am a the suspects also told TVC that they pay 300 naira to the state government through the Office of Natural and Mineral Resources before they are allowed access to the mining sites every day. The state commandant of the NSCDC also paraded a 34-year-old Abiodun Akeju for theft in Ijebujesha. The man stole thousands of naira from uh, the people of his community, from which he bought mattresses, plasma TV, and a, a furniture cabinet. Also, two Android phones suspected to be stolen were found in his possession. They will be charged to court upon the completion of investigations. Rafi Hamid, TVC News, Ushubo. Well, let's get back to our coverage of um, developments in Undo State ahead of the election. Let's bring in the Executive Director of the International Press Center, Larry Arogundade, thanks for um, staying with us. L let me ask you about your reaction to the number of um, security agents deployed for this election, um, over 40,000. Okay. Hello, thank you. You said my reaction to... Okay. Your reaction to the number of security agents deployed for the election. Well, uh, for, for security, um, what we can hold on to now is uh, the, the promise uh, made at uh, the signing of the peace accord by the representative of the Inspector General of Police that uh, adequate uh, personnel would be deployed. 
and uh, he gave a figure of uh, over 40,000 personnel, out of which about uh, 11,000 or thereabouts would be policemen that will be deployed uh, across the states to ensure that uh, there is uh, you know, security. Of course, we are also aware that uh, the Inspector General of Police had said that uh, uh, state um, security agencies like uh, Amotekun uh, would not uh, be allowed to be involved. I guess this is understandable because uh, if uh, that should happen, there, there could be the interpretation that uh, they might be biased or partial on the side of uh, the state government. Uh, this is a federal election as it is, even though it's a governorship election. And uh, we are looking up to the police. We're looking up to the civil, de uh, uh, civil defense corps. Uh, these are the two main bodies that uh, uh, we're expecting to ensure that uh, there is uh, you know, security. Uh, part of the concern is that when we also mention some of these numbers, and uh, they say we're deploying these thousands, it could also have a way of uh, intimidating some people to give the pressure that uh, perhaps they are doing all this because there could be violence. But I, and that's why we also would like uh, the security agencies to give assurance that uh, essentially uh, this is just to ensure protection and not to intimidate uh, you know, voters. So it's an interesting aspect of uh, this uh, development. And one of the things we would also like to do uh, is to hold uh, the security agencies accountable uh, for the promise that they have made that uh, there will be peaceful conduct of the elections. But another responsibility of security agents that people really talk about is the fact that uh, they also accompany the officials to the areas to which uh, they are deployed. And in that regard, we would like to appeal to them to also arrive early so that they can be part of it. Thank you so much for your time. Um, we'll continue to have this conversation with, with you uh, before and during and after the election. Thank you. Executive Director of the International Press Center, Larry Arogudade. Away from Ondo State, two other stories. The chairman of the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, Ola Lukoyede, says Nigeria lost out on the Halliburton scandal that was prosecuted in the country, while the United States of America has made over $3 billion from the litigation. He said this when he received members of the House of Representatives Committee on Financial Crimes. Flessing Area reports. A day after the visit of the Senate Committee on Anti-Corruption to the EFCC headquarters, the House Committee on Financial Crimes visits the Commission. This visit is to assess the budgetary performance of the Commission between 2023 and 2024. The Chairman of the Committee assures the Commission of their support through laws and appropriations. He says the EFCC must work hard to correct the narrative that the agency is used to settle political scores. The report given to the lawmakers by the Commission will be considered, and if there are questions, the chairman will be invited for a discussion. The EFCC must ensure transparency and accountability in its operation. The negative magazine being peddled in certain quarters that the agency is often being used to settle political scores must be made to be incorrect. Responding to the committee, Chairman of the Commission, Ola Lukoyode, made reference to the Halibontins case and how Nigeria lost out from benefiting from its litigation. We did the investigation here in Nigeria. The bribe was bribe paid in Nigeria at the expense of our economy. When they took all the proof of evidence to the U.S., the matter was prosecuted in the U.S. As of the last information I got, the U.S. had made over $3 billion in form of fine, plea bargain, from that particular scandal that took place in Nigeria. And not one dime, not one naira, it will make out of that scandal. Not one. No recovery? Not. But the moment that thing happened, they moved them to the U.S., they recorded them by the provision of the Foreign Corrupt Practices Act. The chairman of the EFCC highlighted some of the needs of the commission to the committee, ranging for the need to acquire new and modern technology to be able to trade financial crimes. Also, he talked about housing and welfare for staff of the EFCC, as well as need to have permanent locations for their zona offices. Celestina area, TVC News. Abuja. Over 100 Nigerian youths have been trained on the conversion of 